I would call this, to use a technical term, I would call this sort of kind of smooth. <laughs> you know, kind of sort of smooth. Because there's stuff around here that's way smoother than this. It's polished like glass in places. It looked like a professional stone cutter got in there with their diamond buffer and polished it down because they were going to use it for some museum piece or something. That's how polished um, some of this stone is. And you can see these lines. Hey, how convenient these lines are kind of going all like this. See that? Those are uh, glacial grooves and striations. Um, those are indicative of, those are tracks of the last glacial epoch that happened in this area. 14,000 years ago, where we're standing was underneath a mile of ice. It was called the Laurentian Glacier. Um, it advanced through here about 30,000 years ago. Went as far south as um, Long Island, Nantucket, Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, Manhattan Island, northern New Jersey, and stop! Like somebody put the brakes on. This mile thick of ice filled with boulders the size of buses and apartment buildings and houses moving inexorably southward as far south as those land masses that I talked about and stopped. Why did, why did it stop? No. Oh, you were swatting. I thought she was raising her hand. Ah, oh, ding, 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 ding. Sold. The million dollar painting. Sold to the lady in green. You know, that sort of stuff. Oh, I was just scratching my ear. You know? Any idea why the glacier stopped advancing? Did they bump into something? No. Good guess, though. Why would ice... What, what, what would be an warm. enemy of ice? No. Warmth. No. Climate change. Global warming happened 14,000 years ago. The climate change in that, that ice sheet began to melt and dropped all the all the stuff that was all those boulders and stuff that was in the ice sheet that I talked about all got deposited in, a, in an esker or terminal moraine uh, and that's what formed Long Island and Nantucket and Cape Cod if you look at those if you look at a map of those land masses they kind of look like gravel at the bottom of your driveway after a rainstorm where the water washes down your driveway and you see the gravel at the bottom of the driveway to me that's what those land masses look like. So then that glacier advanced, dropped its stuff, and then retreated, melted down, and left a lot of uh, tracks and remnants of, of its advance and departure. Another thing we can, another clue that we have as to uh, glaciation in this area is something called chatter marks. Chatter marks are these typically crescent shaped marks, uh, chips in the bedrock. And chatter marks have a leading edge and a trailing edge. You see the leading edge is steep and the trailing edge is shallow, right? That's emblematic and indicative of a chatter mark. Now a chatter mark, the best indication I can use of a chatter mark is if you scratch your nails on a blackboard or if you take an eraser, you know if you take an eraser on a smooth table and you go brrrr, and it goes brrrr, vibrates across the table, that's the chatter mark. That's what's happening here, is there's so much kinetic energy, so much downward force that um, the, uh, the boulders and so forth, the stuff that's inside the ice sheet gets stuck and then it hops along uh, with all this kinetic energy behind it, okay? So we've covered all those right here on this one rock. Uh, we've got glacial grooves, striations, polishing, and chatter marks, okay? So keep an eye out for these as you um, as we walk along here. Another thing is this: these lines are like a compass needle. These are just like a compass needle. If you were to stand on these lines and look that way and follow this bearing, you'd end up right at Manhattan Island. You'd go right to Long Island. You'd go right to Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard. It's like a bearing. So these are the, these lines are, are like a compass needle, and they'll take you right to those landmarks. And hey Michael, yes. How much have these rocks changed in the last uh, 10,000 years since the glacier? What a great question. Because um, you're showing us all these things that the glacier did. Is that what it looked like after the glacier left? Or? That's a great question. When you feel how smooth this is, remember I said the glacier vacated 14,000 years ago? This is 14,000 years of where? Right? It's 14,000 years. And it's still smooth. How many, how many uh, Mohunk guests walked on this? You know? So uh, that's, that's an indication of the durability of this rock. I said in the beginning, this is some of the hardest rock in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, geez, in 14,000 years, it's still almost as smooth as a tabletop, right? So they've, had so hard, changed they've hardly changed at all. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that is a dramatic change would be rock fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
takes up more space than water. As the water freezes, the ice expands and pushes rocks out and causes them to cleave off. Okay, so that, that would be some, a rock fall would be one of the only significant changes to this bedrock. Other than that, it's how it was 14,000 years ago. Isn't that cool? And I'm going to talk more about that. Just real quick question, is this one of the buses that was carried by the glacier or was this underneath the glacier? This was underneath. This is the bed of the glacier. Great question. The glacier s advanced and retreated and slid along the top of this. This is the bedrock. All right. When we get around here, just a couple more feet, I'm going to talk about this uh, fault that is Lake Mohonk and how this all kind of fits together. Okay? Shall we? Any other questions?